While 1936 brought rumblings of war in Europe, there were different rumblings in Berkeley. Thunder was about to be heard on the turf of Memorial Stadium. Legendary names like Bob Herwig, Sam Chapman, Vic Batari, Johnny Meek, Vard Stockton, and Perry Schwartz would lead the 1937 thundering Golden Bears to the university's second national championship and a Rose Bowl win over Alabama. Not since Andy Smith's wonder team had Cal football achieved such domination on the gridiron. The Rose Bowl bid already belonged to the Bears, but for the time being, a big game win against Stanford took priority over Pasadena. 88,000 fans fill Stanford Stadium under heavy rain and a muddy field. Cal completely dominated the game, but due to the field conditions, the scoreboard only showed a 13-0 Bear victory. Our team had tremendous camaraderie, and uh, I think that was, frankly, the secret of our success. Uh, we all liked each other. We all had the same frame of mind as far as playing the game, and uh, we worked as a unit, and uh, nobody was more important than anybody else. And uh, other teams were bigger than we were, faster than we were, maybe had some better athletes, uh, but we feel that we had a better overall team effort. Uh, and uh, that's why we won the ball game. We had tre tremendous camaraderie. Vic Batari touchdown pass to Angelo Reginato proved to be all they needed to keep the axe in Berkeley in 38, and they won again in 39. We never lost to Stanford. Sophomore year, we beat them 20 to nothing. Junior year, we beat them 13 to nothing. The senior year, we beat them 6 to nothing. It was going down each year, and they might have caught us in another year, but I was out of there by then. With the arrival of Clark Shaughnessy and his revolutionary T formation on the Stanford campus in 1940, it was the Indians' turn to be the dominant force in college football. We had been a, a single-wing team the, the year previous when we didn't win a game. We turned around with a T formation and a new coach and a new attitude, and we didn't lose a game. And the opposition, our opponents, had never seen uh, uh, the T formation before, and. Uh, uh, it was so much fun to get the ball from center and, and make a couple fakes to the backs uh, uh, going into the line and then drop back to pass and nobody could find the ball. And uh, it was really uh, uh, a fun formation for us because we were so successful. Well, we, of course, we knew about, I mean, they had uh, had the, played the whole season with a T formation and uh, we had never played against it. but. Uh, we played a very good game against them. In, in fact, we almost won the game. 1941 was to be another big game exception to the rule. Coming off a perfect 10-0-0 season and a national ranking, the Wow Boys continued their winning ways going into the big game. Cal was a 12-point underdog to the powerful Indians. But from the opening kickoff, the inspired Bears made it clear that this year, the ax belonged to them. Cal won. Uh, they blocked two of my punts. And it was rather embarrassing uh, for 80,000 people to have two punts blocked when you hadn't had one blocked all in three years. The final, California 16, Stanford nothing. Another big game upset. Another big game exception to the rule. But those results were very quickly forgotten as eight days later, on December 7th, 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and the war to end all wars had begun.